discuss about the new subject that is circuit analysis uh, in some other universities or board it is also known as circuit theory and even network theory so uh, what we will discuss in this uh, in this uh, session is the basic part that is the what is charge resistance and different network elements after that we will discuss about different kind of source like voltage control voltage source voltage devices and uh, voltage control current devices at the same time I will also discuss about different basic laws like Ohm's law, Joule's law and then we will discuss about the different session I mean the different kind of KCL, KVL and all if time permits then I will also discuss about the Thevenin's theorem, superposition theorem, Telegram's theorem etc so let us start with the basic uh, another thing which I want to say you is that uh, there is actually a session in which I will uh, solve, uh, I mean solve different kind of questions and queries sent by you that will be a separate session I will definitely take care of it and uh, I will definitely upload within uh, one week so let us discuss today's session so first thing which I need to discuss is the charge as you can see what is charge charge is basically a physical quantity in which the the unit for is uh, the coulomb and it is given by Q now the current what is current so current is basically the amount of flow of charge through any conductor in per unit time mathematically it is given as I equals to Q by T then we have voltage so before we discuss the voltage we need to understand what is EMF the full form of EMF is electro motive force so what is electromotive force electromotive force is that kind of driving force which actually pushes the charge from a higher potential to a lower potential that is called as emf but emf is generally being experienced in case of open circuit so whenever we have a closed circuit in that case we uh, actually you know modify the term emf as voltage it is given in volt in the si unit of voltage is volt then we have resistance so any kind of uh, material when the charges flow through it it offers some kind of resistance or some kind of hindrance so the physical or the physical term for that hindrance is known as resistance you see this this charge uh, voltage current and resistance is a generalized term it is applicable for both the DC circuit as well as the AC circuit but whenever we are actually accompanying our AC circuit or we, we, we actually need to extrapolate our AC circuit we need to understand this two term that is inductance and capacitance so what is inductance so you see whenever you have uh, some kind of coil as you can see in case of uh, motor induct induction motor or any kind of switching device in that case we have an inductor out there so inductor is basically a coil in which there they are due to magnetic flux a certain amount of energy is being stored so basically inductance or inductor is a energy storing device in inductor the storing element or the what the quantity that is being stored is actually current that's why I have given one formula out here that is phi that is the magnetic flux is equals to L dot I that is called self inductance L is self inductance self inductance so phi is equals to L I therefore L is equals to phi by I now we have capacitance so capacitance is what capacitance capacitor you already have heard about capacitor like we have that thing in our normal ceiling fan or any kind of fan also we have these things in different kind of circuit IC circuit whenever any kind of filtration see AC circuit or AC uh, signals are accompanied with different kind of noise signals so we need to filter all those noises those uh, I mean unwanted kind of uh, signals so we need to use a capacitor in that so capacitor is what capacitor is actually the capacitance is actually charge per unit voltage that is C is equals to Q by V the SI unit for it is farad C in case of parallel plate capacitor there are different kind of capacitors as well like a spherical capacitor like a parallel plate capacitor and many capacitors but in our general electrical circuit we actually use a parallel plate capacitor so what is parallel plate capacitor there are two plates are there one positive charge or negative charge and the amount of the total voltage or the uh, total voltage is actually Q by C is equals to Q by V given as V we know the charge so the value of the C is equals to epsilon 
A by D, where A is actually the area of the parallel plate capacitor, D is the distance between the two plate, and E is equal to 8.85 into 10 to the power of minus 12. It's a constant value. Now, when, when we are actually uh, discussing about AC circuit, in AC circuit, uh, the, the quantity that was, uh, I mean, giving a hindrance to the flow of current in case of DC circuit, that was resistance. But whenever we are discussing about the AC circuit, the same quantity being modified and it is called as impedance. Now what is impedance? Impedance is basically the resistance in case of AC circuit. This impedance and resistance are no different. But resistance is only being, only being used in case of DC circuit. But whenever we are using an AC circuit, then we, we need to accompany this term that is Z. And that is equals to root over R squared plus XL minus XC squared. Now one question you might get that what is XL and XC? XL is called as inductive reactance and that is equal to omega L. So what is omega L? Omega is the frequency of the circuit, I mean frequency of the signal. So as you can see in case of DC, the frequency is zero. That means you, have only, you will only get this R and Z is equal to R square root. That means Z is equal to R. That means whenever the frequency is zero, the total impedance is actually equal to resistance. But in case of AC circuit, there will be a finite value for this omega. So in that case, we'll get a, I mean, a, a value for the impedance. Now, now we, we discuss about the different sources, like there are dependent sources and there are independent sources. So as the name suggests, that what are independent sources? Independent sources are those uh, sources in which it does not depend upon the any network, like be it current or be it voltage. And the dependent sources are those that, that they are dependent on the particular network, be it a current network or a voltage network. As it has been said out here, it doesn't depend on any network or current or voltage. The dependent sources, they are dependent on a particular network, current and voltage. Now you see there are some kind of devices. As we have, as I've said in, in this uh, BJT, that was what? That was a current control current device. Because the formula where it was IC is equal to beta into IB. That means the output is directly dependent on the input current that is IB. But there is another kind of device which is known as voltage controlled voltage device. You see there plus and minus this is VAB out here. The input is VAB and the output I am giving voltage. I am getting voltage. That means this VCD is directly depending upon the VAB. That means it is what? It is known as a voltage control. This is the controlling voltage and the voltage device. That means the output is also a voltage. Is, that is one uh, sign term. You see, whenever there is a voltage control dependent kind of, uh, I mean, when the when this circuit is a dependent voltage source, in that case, there is a diamond-like structure you need to find. And if it is a voltage, then you have to give the uh, sign. So the current is flowing in this direction in this direction that means this part should be positive and this part should be negative so what i have done is that that from the upper, in the upper part i have given a plus sign and in the lower part i have given a negative sign so this is all about this voltage control voltage device now we have voltage control current device so in voltage control current device what we have is that we have a similar thing we have a similar vab which is a input but in the output, what we have is that we have a current atom out there and this is flowing in this direction. That means the direction of the current is from above to below. So what should be given in this diamond is that, that in spite of giving the plus and minus, which was applicable in case of the voltage, we will give a sign, a arrow. And the arrow will represent the direction in which the current is flowing. So current is flowing from this direction like this. So we have this uh, arrow showing beneath I mean in this direction so this is this is known as a uh, voltage controlled current device you need to understand this convention because whenever we are solving any kind of problem they will be given some kind of voltage source uh, secondary voltage or a dependent voltage source and there will be a primary voltage source so we need to I mean justify the value of this uh, de dependent voltage source then only we can simplify the circuit and we can solve it for any kind of uh, like for finding the resistance or finding the any kind of voltage etc so before before i go into the main discussion you need to understand there are some important convention some important definitions 
like the first one is nodes so what are nodes nodes is something like that whenever there is a junction and the junction of what and the junction of b is that there are two uh, circuit elements two or more circuit elements nodes uh, nodes so in nodes is what nodes is basically a junction in which two at least two or more than two elements are connected together in this circuit as you can see there are uh, three network elements like r2 r1 and r3 so basically d is a node now we need to uh, understand the branch so what is branch branch an element or number of elements connected between two nodes like see uh, d is a node the minimum the minimum actually the benchmark for making any kind of junction as a node is that that two or more than two elements needs to be connected here uh, three elements are connected so d is a node and a here two elements are connected so a is also a node so this is actually a branch because as the definition suggests an element or number of elements connected between two nodes is basically a branch now the loop so what is a loop loop is basically when from a normal sense that whenever we start from a point and we get back to that point that is a loop by this by this uh, graph theory right so if we start from d this current is going this current is passing through r4 then r5 then r3 and going back to d that means this whole uh, i mean the whole thing from d a p c d is a loop that is d a p c d is a loop right then we have a mesh so mesh is that binary part of a loop which cannot be disintegrated into any further uh, thing so what we can say is that d a p is a mesh so this is the binary things which uh, we are supposed to discuss then we have two important laws that is the kirchhoff's current law also known as kcl and we have also kirchhoff's voltage law also known as kvl so what is uh, kirchhoff's current law you see you can compare the kirchhoff's current law with a pipe right there are several pipes are going to a point and from that point another pipe is going outside so what it, what i mean to say is that suppose you can see in this diagram suppose this is one number is pipe number 1 pipe number 2 and pipe number 3 and pipe number 4 some water is flowing in this direction towards the junction and in this pipe that is pipe number 4 the water is flowing outside so if there is no kind of loss if there is no loss in this junction if there is no leakage in this uh, junction so the amount of the water which is flowing in towards this junction that will be equals to the number i mean the total amount of the water flowing outside so this is actually the current i mean the case of current law we can actually uh, replace the term water with the current so the amount of the current flowing through flowing towards the junction towards the junction is actually equals to the amount of the current or the, the value of the current flowing outside this is actually known as kirchhoff's current law and then we have the kirchhoff's voltage law so what is kirchhoff's voltage law kirchhoff's voltage law is that the total voltage the total voltage suppose we are we are taking in this branch i mean this loop the v r1 this is the i mean the voltage across the r1 resistance v r4 that is the voltage across the r4 v r5 that is the voltage across the r5 and the v r3 that is the voltage across the r3 if we summarize all the voltages then the total summarization of the voltage will be zero that means the total voltage in any kind of circuit any kind of circuit i mean the source plus those other kind of uh, voltage across resistance voltage across inductor voltage across capacitance will be zero so this is what is uh, i mean given in the kvl so after this uh, kirchhoff's voltage law uh, there are two important things uh, which you need to remember is first one the uh, voltage and the current division principles you see whenever we are solving any kind of network uh, theorems or any kind of i mean analysis we need to understand this voltage and current division principles as that what the value of what is the value of the voltage in any of the resistor uh, capacitor inductor maybe so we need to i mean discuss this thing and after the discussion of it i will directly jump 
to this uh, networking theorems like Thevenin's theorem. First, I will start with Thevenin's theorem, then Norton's theorem, then superposition, Telegram's theorem, and maximum power transfer theorem. Other theorems are also there, but the, those are less important. The main, the most important are the first four theorems which I have said. So the first is the series resistors and the voltage division. As you can see, in this circuit, there is a voltage source V. There is a resistance R1 and R2 and both are connected in series combination. Now in Ohm's law, by Ohm's law, V is actually equals to IR. Now the voltage is there and the current is flowing in this degree. Since the, volt since the resistance are in these, uh, in, I mean in a series combination and there are no other branches, so the current in this whole circuit will be same. The I, the value of current will be same. That means that is VR1 by if we apply the voltage, I mean the Ohm's law, VR1 is equals to I, the amount of current flowing through R1 or flowing through this branch I into R1. This I have written that VR1 is equals to I R1. And similarly, the VR2 that is equals to I R2. Now, if we apply this Kirchhoff's voltage law out here, what Kirchhoff's voltage law says is that the total amount of the voltage or the summation of voltage term is basically zero. So, uh, this voltage V minus this VR1 minus this VR2 should be zero, right? In other words, what we can write is that V is equals to VR1 plus R2. That means that summation of total voltage dropped across the R1 and R2 is basically the same term that is V. Now, VR1 and VR2, if we substitute this value VR1 and VR2 out here, what we get is I in common and R1 plus R2, right? Now, you see, you know the series combination, uh, I mean the equivalent resistance in case of series combination is the summation of the resistances, right? Since there are two resistances, so what will be the equivalent resistance? That is REQ will be equals to R1 plus R2. Now, uh, what we can do is that, see, V and I R1, when V equals to is equals to I R1 plus R2, right? So, I is equals to V divided by R1 plus R2. In other way, what we can say is that V, or I is equals to V by R E Q, right? Now, if we, if we want to get the value of the V R1, then we can directly substitute this value of I out here. So, what we will get is that V R1, R, V R1 is equals to R1 divided by R1 plus R2 into V. And similarly, V R2 is equals to R2 divided by R1 plus R2 into V. Just, sim just simply a uh, substitution of all the things, nothing else, right? So, if, if we consider that there are n number of resistances connected in series combination, in series combination, then what we need to do? If we are ought to find the voltage across the nth resistor, so what we can do is that, that Vn is equals to the nth resistance value divided by the total value, provided that the circuit is in uh, series combination into the voltage, then we will get the voltage across the nth resistor. So, so this is this is about all this. Uh, I mean, the voltage division principle. In the next session, I will discuss about the current division principle and other uh, network theorems. So, thank you, and please send your query and subscribe the channel.